Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray, and I teach watercolor here at Let's Make Art. And today we are doing the raindrops tutorial. Ah. Um, we will be doing this project in six steps. So our very first step is we will be putting in our rainbow background. Our, nope, nope. False. False. Our first step is we'll sketch the raindrops. Oh. Our second step is we'll put in our rainbow background. Our third step is we'll put in our shadows. Fourth step, we'll do the gradient wash gradient on the raindrops fifth step go back into the shadows sixth sixth step any last finishing details okay got it we are using colors for this project three of them four of them hold on let me put the fourth one on my palette because uh, i haven't done that a lot yet. of stuff over there around you sarah don't you guys don't need to worry about it. All you can see is this mat. That's true. And all that's where you guys live, and that's good. Okay, you don't need to see the rest of this desk area. Our first color is fuchsia. Our second color is lemon yellow. Our third color is Tahoe blue. And our last color is Payne's gray. So we're basically doing like yellow, cyan, magenta, black um, color palette here for this entire box. And the whole point of this box is to talk about the wonderful world of color. I want to introduce you to a version of the primaries and then showing you all of the different things that you can do it with a little bit of like throwback Lisa Frank vibes. Ooh, okay. Because who doesn't love like rainbow and joy? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know either. Rainbows are great. Rainbows are great. Okay. Uh, the paints we are using are Dandelion Paint Co. They are in-house paint brand. They're a liquid watercolor, which means they're dye-based, which is so great because that means they're super vibrant. Uh, but that also means that they uh, are fugitive. Like if they're in direct sunlight, they will fade over time. Uh, some pigment paints do that as well. So if that's important to you, make sure you know that about the paints before you paint. We are using Let's Make Our Watercolor Paper. M make sure you paint on the more textured size. For this project, I tore it in half and we're just going to do a half sheet because this is going to take us some time. So make sure you get cozy, grab a snack, do what you got to do to set up because we'll be here for a bit. And we are going to use three paintbrushes with this project. We have a round two and a round six and our round 12. Now, can you still do this project without the round 12? Yes, you can. It just is going to take a little bit longer, but that's okay. I do love that round 12. Round 10 is my favorite though. A round 10 is your favorite? Yeah. You know what actually is really fun to use? Have you used like a round like 20? No. It's actually really fun. I will use one soon then. Yeah. I did one. Because that's huge. On a floral collection where I was painting big and I was trying to do the background in quick because I wanted to get bleeds. Yeah. <sighs> it's awesome. It's just, it's a beast of a brush. <laughs> So great. You like pick up all this paint, you're like, whoa, and I'm like reaching across the desk painting. I'm like laying sprawled out on the table, reaching these paper. It's fun to paint big when you're used to painting small. Sorry, <laughs> let's get back to this project. Okay, so um, let's do our oath, and then we're gonna do a... I was ready for the oath. Oh, and we are going to do a warm up exercise for this project, Ooh. actually, which is not something we usually do. And then we're gonna go straight into the project. So if you can raise your right hand and repeat after me, I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so I wanna call something out, which is when I first painted this raindrops project for this, um, box. I was stoked. I was just like, oh, look at those raindrops. Like, huh. hello, so cool. I mean, looking at that, I also got excited. He, yes. I was like, oh. So then over time, I was looking more and more at my raindrops. I was thinking about how I'm going to teach this to you guys effectively. And then I just realized like, I got to approach this project a different way mm -hmm. than how I did the step by steps. And I want to like, make sure I'm setting you guys up for success. So we're going to approach this a little bit differently than the step by steps. And it might turn out slightly differently than this reference photo, because I looked at this and I'm like, you know what, 
I can do better. Yeah. You know? Okay. And I'm going to teach them because I want to teach you guys right. So oh. I want to call that out. And I'm going to show you how to do just one water drop. Okay. And I'll paint this. But I just want to do give you the information for one. And then we can apply that to whatever we do on our project or whatever you guys want to do. Now, before we actually paint it, I want to point out a couple of things. You want to make sure that your background, if you're painting a background, which we are, you want to do a medium to light value, okay? You want to make sure that the shadow wow. is going to be a darker value than the medium and light background, okay? So it shows up. And then the actual raindrop itself needs to be a value gradient, which means we're going to start dark and then the value is gonna get lighter over time. Over time meaning over this circle, okay? Now the biggest thing, so that's super important. That gradient is super important. The second super important thing is you gotta make sure that you leave a highlight on your raindrop. That is really what's gonna make it pop. So there's three elements to really making sure the, your water drop pops out. One, a great shadow that it's a darker value than whatever your ground is. Two, a value gradient across your water drop. And three, a highlight on your water drop. If you can do those three things, this is gonna read three-dimensional, nice. okay? Okay. So we're gonna do that bigger, because I want you guys to be able to see this really well. And look, this was me practicing smaller too. Doesn't that feel more dimensional than that one? That is so cool. I was just like, I'm like you know what? I can do better. I can do better and I'm gonna show them and I'm gonna teach them better. Wow. So, let's go. Your reference photo with those in comparison makes me think of pebbles instead of raindrops. Yeah, yeah, that's I can see that. That's I think, interesting. I think because the this time around they definitely feel more three-dimensional. Yeah. Where this one, they feel three-dimensional but maybe not as much. Right. So, I'm really excited to show you guys how to do this. Okay. So the other um, item that would be super helpful to have around for this project, if you don't have a lot of time, is a heat gun. We'll be using a heat gun to dry off our paper so we can layer on those different values. So the first thing that I want you guys to do is um, very lightly draw a circle. And this is gonna be our actual water drop, okay? And I'm painting it lightly because I don't want the pencil marks to pop out. And I'm gonna do this example just using one color, um, but we'll be using a lot of colors in this project. So I just wanna point that out too. So I'm gonna grab blue and add some water to it, water it down. So it's a light to medium value. And then I'm just gonna start painting around the drop. So I'm leaving the drop totally white. And I wanna work quickly so then those colors blend out nicely. Okay. All right, Keenan, can you go to the close-up cam? Yes, I can. I just want, I don't want that glare on there because I really want them to see. I'm gonna try. Is that any better? Yeah, that looks good. Okay. So then what we're gonna do at this point, we put in our background. Now we're gonna let this dry before we try and put in our shadows. So after we put in our background, we're gonna put in, um, start putting in our shadows. So I'm gonna grab some blue and I just wanna make sure that the value I'm putting down is darker than what's already on there. Now remember with values, it's so much easier with watercolor to build your way up instead of going like, you know that black is a dark value, but don't put in black in your shadow because then that won't feel like it's in the same world. You know what I mean? So I'm grabbing blue. I'm gonna start at the curve, like where that dot meets the bottom of the paper, put in a darker value and then rinse my brush, pat it on my paper towel, 
and blend out. Because we also, like shadows also get a little bit lighter as they go out. Okay, so that's where we're gonna start. Start there. And then you wanna make sure that this is totally dry before you do your next step. So I'm gonna use my heat gun. Which is very handy. Heat it craft tool. Let's make our dot com. <laughs> Good job, Keenan. Thank you. You might get paid today. <laughs> <laughs> However much We'll that see how this sells. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's pretty good. And so now what we're going to do is put in the gradient on our water drop, avoiding some lines for glares. If you need to draw in the lines to help you remember, feel free to do that, or you can just skip over them when you paint. So I'm gonna grab some blue, and I'm gonna start by picking up um, more paint than I did for the background. I want the top of this to be a dark value and then it's going to go down to a light value, okay? So I'm gonna grab blue and do the top. And then now I'm just gonna draw out some spots for the glare, okay? And then I'm gonna rinse my brush, hit it off the side of the cup Hit it on my paper towel because I want I don't want too much excess water. Till I'm about halfway, and then do the same thing. Rinse it, hit it off the side of my paper towel, blend. Oh snap. Again, rinse, hit it off my cup, hit it on my paper towel. So now we have a barely there color. I mean it is barely there. And it looks like you're pushing into the blue versus pulling from it. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want the color to stay at the top. So I'm kind of forcing that value of color to go up instead of into my light area. Okay? Okay. And then you just want to shape your drop. Now all of our drops on our project are actually pretty wonky. Um, but this one I just kind of want to show you that you can, you can change the shape of your water drop as you go. Okay, so that's our first layer. And now what we're going to do is just, we're just going to work on um, darkening our values or kind of having more of a range of our values and that's really what's going to make this pop and be three-dimensional. So I did my water drop. We're going to let that dry for a second. I'm going to go back into my shadow And right underneath the water drop is where it's going to be the darkest value. Okay. Rinse. Blend out. And it's so funny because actually the line of your shadow is going to give the viewer information on the actual shape of your drop. So like sometimes I'll go in with my round two, my smaller brush, and smooth out that line so it doesn't feel like sharp. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. And let's take the heat gun and let that dry for a second. Remember to move this heat gun across. So as to not catch that one spot real hot. Yep, burn it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kenan's, Kenan's learned that. Yes. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna go into my water drop and basically just increase my value range. So I really want to essentially darken the top part, but I still want that transition to be smooth. So I'm gonna take a blue and to help me darken that edge, I'm going to grab a tiny bit of Payne's gray, not a lot. We do not want this to read as black. We still want it to feel like the same color, just a darker version of that color. So I'm using Payne's gray to help me do that. And I'm going to go along the top. So that top rim 
is going to be the darkest value. Okay, and then right after you get past the highlights, I'm rinsing my brush, hitting it off the paper towel so it's not too wet, and blending down. Rinse, hit, blend. And remember, you can lift a little bit too. Like, let's say you put a value down and you're like, ooh, that's too dark. I'm just going to shape my glare a little bit more. It looks so cool already. You just don't want a hard transition edge. So like I'm kind of working out that dark blue a little bit more because I don't want it to feel like chunk, mm. chunk. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to work this a little bit more. So kind of just work the area back and forth. Okay, and we're going to let that dry. And then we'll do our shadow we got to go back in and really define our shadow and make this water drop pop from the ground. So I'm going to grab some more of that dark blue, the same one that I use for the top of the water drop. Rinse. Blend. I'm getting a real crystal ball vibe right now. Oh, yeah, that's what we want. And then now is where you kind of just like, if you need to reshape, like I feel like this needs to be a little bit rounder here. Go ahead and reshape it. But a water drop. Dang, that looks awesome. And then like, it's good to like walk away from it for a minute and come back to it. Do you need to darken your shadows? Do you need that gradient to be smoother? Like, you know, step away from a second, come back to it with fresh eyes. Take a picture of it. Take a picture of it, that's helpful. But just kind of, I mean, this is such, I will say that like, this project is probably a little bit more advanced because of that attention to gradient. And like you, you need to have a little bit of a better understanding of um, paint to water ratio. And I feel like you could spend a lot of time on each raindrop if you really wanted to. Yeah, we're gonna kind of like do this, but much faster with our actual like project. So I just wanted to give you a nice, slow, like clear, detailed version. And I just keep going. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like with these, you can just like go, go, go. Just feel like where that glare is meeting that edge, that transition needs to be smoother. There we go, that feels better to me. Yeah, okay. Okay, so that is a good start. So, we're, so if you look at like these raindrops here, that's essentially the very same thing, just a smaller version and then different shapes. Okay? Okay. So we're just going to repeat that over and over again till we 
got our project done. Sweet. Okay. So, let's start with drawing in our raindrops. Now, uh, I want to call out that when you do gradients, value transitions, and things like that, um, larger is better. Like painting bigger is easier because it gives you more space to communicate value transitions, shadows, that kind of thing. Um, these are fairly small. These raindrops on our thing are very small. So I'm gonna make these a little bit bigger when I paint. That will make things faster, mm -hmm. one. And two, um, just so I can really show you that change. And, um, but this is your project and it's totally up to you. Like if you wanted to just do one big water drop on here, you can, or like three, you know what I mean? Sweet. But I'm just gonna take a pencil and I'm gonna lightly do, is that too big? Maybe that's too big. Some water drops. And I am gonna make them different shapes, smaller, but just remember that you're gonna have to do a gradient on every single one of these. So think about how much time you have to devote to this project and be aware. I will say that um, if you want it to look like water drops or raindrops on a windshield, there's a ton. Like there's probably double the amount of raindrops on here. I was just looking at like a bunch of different reference photos of raindrops on windshields and there's usually a lot more. So mm. think about that too. Like what is it that you're trying to communicate? Some of these can be funky. Be aware of your spacing. Just realize that I'm doing a pretty even pattern. Boop, 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 boop. Okay. This second thing that you need to know before we do this rainbow wash is that the color of your raindrops are going to change depending on the section of color that is their background. Um, because water is reflective. They reflect whatever colors are around it. So um, if, like you can see here in the yellow section, whenever you're doing your value transitions, your gradients, you're gonna do those in yellow. Same with the orange, pink, green, blue, purple, okay? Um, if you don't want to have to worry about that. You're free to just paint this all one color. Mm. But I thought it'd be fun to, you know. Color it up. Color it up. Okay, so I'm going to use my round 12. I'm going to grab some fuchsia and add some water to it so it's a lighter value. And I'm just going to start painting. Painting around the drops. Oh. You want to paint around them. If you have a masking fluid pen, like we've used in previous projects, um, and you can just mask them up off, that is a good option to save you some time. So I added a little bit of yellow into my fuchsia mixture. Now, if you're like, okay, I have a masking fluid pen, how do I use this? Like, how would this work in this project? What you would do is you would draw your drops and then you would take your masking fluid pen or they can, they also just sell it in like a bottle or a marker. And um, then you would paint over the drops with that masking fluid. And then you would let that dry totally before you went and did your wash. And you can see here, I'm working fairly quickly. When you work quick, um, it's just easier for these colors to kind of blend in with each other. You won't have as many hard edges. Um, another thing that's helpful is try not to, ooh, 
that's too much yellow. That's okay, just put just water on your brush and pull that yellow all around. Spread it out. Spread the love, spread the yellow love. The sunshine. The sunshine. So try not to do a color transition from one to another in the middle of a raindrop, okay? Because that will make it a little bit tricky to do the, um, the value change because then you're just like, do I use yellow? Do I use orange? There's a lot of different colors going on here. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Wow, it's so hard to follow my own advice. I almost just put orange right in the middle of those. <laughs> and then I'm like, no, don't do it. Okay, well, we're moving on. Did you see the rain last night? <sighs> it was almost sideways. Yeah, that was, we were driving back from Kansas City and there was this huge storm warning. It was so windy. Yes. Part of our roof on our porch blew off. Oh, no way. Yeah. Dang. But, I mean, as far as damage and what other people are experiencing, mm -hmm. it's not too bad. Yeah. Okay, so now at this point, I'm going to grab a little bit of blue and add that to my yellow to make green. And remember to keep... Um, make sure that you're still doing a light or medium value. This is not your, so like what I mean by that is like bring water into your mixture. When you're mixing green and you want to make it a lighter green, just add more water to it. Some of these areas, I'm kind of just working back and forth to help that transition line. I'm not pressing or scrubbing hard. It's just a light little, like, hey, be this color instead. Okay, so now I'm grabbing a little bit of blue. Ooh, I got a turquoisey color here. Mm, I like that. That's probably a little bit too much um, green in this mixture. So I'm not gonna freak out. I'm just next swipe. I'm just gonna grab blue. There we go. Now what's a little bit tricky about this step is as you're switching colors and doing color transitions, you wanna be aware of the values and make sure that they're all a fairly similar value from one section to another. So one's not more distracting than the other? Right. If that doesn't happen and you just happen to have one darker spot, it's not the end of the world. Don't stress, keep going because this is a valuable lesson to learn. It's a fun project, playful and bright. Okay, and then I'm gonna start introducing fuchsia to my blue and that's gonna make this really pretty purple color. Let's do a, even a little bit more fuchsia. Oh, 
Okay. So we did our rainbow wash. Step one, complete. Good job, you guys. Done. Done. And if you look closely, you can see like I wasn't perfect about like avoiding my dots. I wasn't very like precise. Um, so don't stress if yours isn't precise. I was just trying to work quickly because you can always like slightly adjust your raindrops looks because these are wonky. They're not perfectly round like our previous example. So like if your raindrop is wonky shaped, that's fine. That's what we're going for here. Okay, so to make sure this is dry before I put in my shadows, I'm going to use my heat gun to straight off. If you don't have a heat gun, snack time. Snack time, ooh, Star Crunch. Star Crunch time for Keenan. <laughs> He's like, where is it? <laughs> You'll notice, wait, can you, can you go to the front camera? Yep. Look at my mug in line with our theme here. Our very bright, happy theme. And it has a lid. Oh, so, that's good. So you know paint mixing. You have to try really hard. Yep. No worries about dipping that paintbrush. Yes. It's happened. It's happened to me quite a few times. <laughs> But this paint isn't toxic, so did I just keep drinking my drink? Uh-huh. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> it only happened one time. All right, let's get back to it. So that should be dry enough. I'm gonna start at the top. And I'm gonna grab my uh, six. You can use your two if you would like, whatever you feel comfortable doing and the size of your drops. And um, we're just gonna start putting in like, I would say that this background is a light value, so I'm gonna put in a medium value for my shadows right now. And I'm gonna have all of the shadows kind of come out right underneath them. Now you wanna make sure that your colors match up. So like, we're mixing colors as we go as well. So this is a little bit more orange. Okay. And now we're getting into the yellow. I gotta pour some yellow back onto my So I'm just basically picking up mostly paint at this point. Now I will say that some colors I feel are a little bit tricky to do gradients with. And one of those colors to me is yellow. And the reason why is because yellow naturally is a lighter value, just the hue itself. So um, sometimes what I'll do to help my yellow feel like it has a full range of value is I will add orange, a little bit of orange to it. I'm not doing that yet, but I might add a little bit of orange to it just to really help. So then I'm, I'm switching the value slightly by hue instead of just by using that, that one uh, color. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay. Now remember when you're putting down this shadow, you wanna make sure that you actually have more paintbrush I mean, more paint on your paintbrush than water, because if you have mostly water, you will actually end up lifting color, and we do not want to lift. Okay, so now I'm getting into like the greenish part. You can see here that I kind of did a color transition right in the middle, so I'm gonna go with like a lime green color. So again, I'm just kind of going off the bottom of these raindrops and doing, I just realized this. So if this is my water drop, my shadow is doing this. So it's kind of, it's not like a, it's like a curve off of it. Does that make sense? So if this is, I'm not doing. Yes. Okay, so it's gonna be thin at the sides where it meets and then it's gonna go out. Okay? Right. Right. That makes sense, yes. <laughs> Correct. You're like, duh. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, now I'm in like full on green. And 
And don't forget these little guys. I always tend to forget just these little itty bitty. Okay. Now we're going into blue. Just make sure that you have more paint on your paintbrush. So how do I say this? With our light value, we mixed in water to our mixture, to our color mixtures to make sure it's a light value. This time when I'm picking up color, I'm not necessarily mixing water into it, but I'm not going deep into the puddle of where all that paint is. Where the edges right here, like I can tell that this is pure blue. I'm not grabbing turquoise, pure blue, but it's not like the depths of that color. The depths of despair. What's the that from? The depths of despair. <laughs> And let's say you're putting a shadow down and you're like, oh, that's so dark. That's so much darker than I wanted. Take a breath. You can rinse your brush and just keep going. That's when you would want to add a little bit of water to your mixture. Okay. And it's super easy. I almost just started painting blue into my purple. Is that bad? Well, you want the shadows to match up with whatever color is, is the background. Okay. So like if I went in here for a blue shadow, would it, would it be terrible? No, it wouldn't be terrible because it would still read as dimensional because the values, like if, you're, if your values are there, then your three dimensionality would be fine. But if you, but sometimes um, having the colors be disjointed from each other could mess with that a little bit or just kind of look off. Okay. But is it the end of the world? No, it's not the end of the world. Okay. And it's funny too, I was thinking about how important this was because I was practicing raindrops in my own personal work to make sure that like, aside from this, like figuring out how to do it like with the landscape behind it. And so I did like this painting where it was like fall leaves with raindrops on top. Like you're driving by on a windshield and there's like, you know, fall trees outside. Yes. And it turned out decent. But what I realized what messed me up is the raindrops that were over the tree part did not change to orange. They stayed, I stayed within a black and white value range, like a gray scale, instead of changing the color of the raindrop to match what's behind it. Oh. And it ended up looking a little bit more like snow. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so it's not terrible. But I think that if I would have changed the raindrops to match the color of what was behind it, it would have been like, <laughs> wowza. <laughs> Get out of here with that, you know? Yes. Okay. So, good job. We um, did step three, shadows on our background. And if you want to take like a damp brush and kind of blend some of these out, if they have a super hard edge, you can just be careful because sometimes if you go in with too much water, you are actually going to create a bloom, which is going to create a hard line, which would be totally defeating of you going and blending in. So do that at your own risk is what I'm saying. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to do the gradient wash on each and every water drop. Now, if you remember with our example here, and I'm gonna do it just quickly, to get a dark value, you're gonna be dipping your paintbrush fully into that color, like full, and put that down. And then to get lighter, rinse, hit off, dab on your paper towel, pull. Rinse, hit off, dab on your paper towel, pull. Smooth gradient. Very smooth. Okay. So, and if you work quickly, the easier it will be to be smooth. So let's do this. Do I want to use my six? Mm. Nope. I'm going with my two. Yeah. That's what I was going to do. Keenan, you're so smart. <laughs> Thank you. You're really good at this. Thank you. I'm yeah. so lucky to have you. <laughs> 
All right, so I have my two. Use whatever size paintbrush. I'm gonna start with my fuchsia. So full on, bathe. Now remember, you're gonna wanna leave a white spot for the glare. And this is why, <laughs> and then rinse. Full. Okay, and we're just gonna leave it at that for now. Now that was a super tiny one. So the super tiny ones, it's so tricky to get a value grading in there. So be kind to yourself on those itty bitty babies. Maybe just like not even worry about them and hope that the three dimensionality of the bigger ones will like carry those with it. You know what I mean? <laughs> let's please, just- Please bless. Let's let the bigger <laughs> ones do the work for us because those itty bitty babies are tricky. Okay, so we're gonna leave that. We're gonna move on. And I'm gonna mix my orange. Make sure I get a nice strong orange here. Okay, I'm gonna go along the top. Make sure it's a darker value. And then I'm gonna leave glare spots. Pull that color down, then rinse. Hit off the side of my cup, dab, pull. Okay. Okay. It can just be quick like that. These are small. You don't have to go crazy on overworking it, even though I really want to. I was gonna say, don't, <laughs> you don't have to keep going back to it. <laughs> you don't have to keep going back to it as I go back into it. <laughs> no, I'm leaving it alone. We're moving on. Let's keep going here. Edge, glare, and just have the glare kind of follow the line, like the form of that top edge. Rinse, dab, pull, rinse, dab, pull. Ba-bam, all right, next one. Now we're going into yellow. Yellow's a little bit tricky because we got that, it's just a light value. So I'm gonna do just yellow. We're gonna see how that turns out. And if I feel like I need to add another color to it to help that Value gradient, I will, but let's just see how it goes. Pure yellow, glare, rinse, dab, pull, rinse, dab, pull. Now remember, the bottom of this drop should be a barely there color, like so light. But can you see how like, I just don't feel like that's such a strong transition. It's wet right now on the screen. So this is reading all as one value to you guys. We'll let that dry. We'll come back to it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to do one just to see what it looks like pulling a little bit of orange into the yellow to make it a more gold color. Let's just see what that does. Okay. okay. So I'm going to go over here, top edge, glare. Work your way down a little, rinse, hit off the side of the cup, dab on your paper towel, pull that color down. Okay. See, like, I feel like that one's popping a little bit more than this one. It is. Okay, I so agree. I'm, from a distance it is. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to do so basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to when I grab my dark value, I'm just going to pull some of that orange into my palette. But remember as you make your way down that water drop to the gradient, you're going to want to pull more yellow so it still reads as yellow instead of orange. Mm. Actually, let's That's too orange. And you can have like a little tester paper by you to like test that color before you put it down. That would be helpful. Cause sometimes you don't even like know what's totally on your brush until you put it on the paper and then you're like, ooh. Well. And that tester paper could turn out to be lovely. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Grab that kind of orange color top. Grab a glare. And then I'm gonna rinse, I'm gonna pick up some yellow. 
then rinse, hit off the side of my cup, dab on my paper towel, and pull. And man, yellow is the largest section that we did here. Yes, it is. <laughs> Which is great. It's the hardest one. That's okay, it's good practice. Now let's say that you're painting along your water drops and you're like, okay, this is going all right, all right. And then you go to transition your value to a lighter value on your raindrop and there's too much water on your brush. So then when you paint it, it like puddles. If that happens to you, don't stress, dry your brush off and then lift the excess water with your brush and pat it on your paper towel, okay? So it's not the end of the world. But if there's too much water on that, um, because basically what water color does in water is it evenly disperses. So if you're trying to go for a value transition and there's too much water on your water drop that it kind of encases the whole thing, whatever value transitions you have will just most likely just even out. So that's why if you like put water down and you're like, oh, that's too much water, that's okay. Dry off your brush, lift it, dry your paintbrush and just keep going. And again, I mean, these raindrops are so tiny that getting that full transition like we were trying to get with our example is a little bit tricky. So don't be too hard on yourself. If, as long as you can tell, as long as you have three values, I'm gonna be happy. As long as you have a shadow slash, as long as you have a dark value, a medium value, and a light value, you're good. Okay, so that's really all I want you to focus on. I don't want you to stress about having to be perfect or smooth. This is a great exercise in water to paint ratio and value transitions. And if you're doing this, and this is one of your first experiences with watercolor and you're getting so frustrated that you're starting to kind of like beat yourself up a little bit or yell at me or <laughs> verbally abuse Keenan. You're making this look so much easier. <laughs> Why is Keenan even here? What do you even do? <laughs> You'd even bring a star crunch for Sarah. Um, if that's starting to happen to you, just remember, this is only a piece of paper, okay? Do not let this define you or stop you from being something that you're interested in or passionate about. The second thing that you can do is maybe it would be better for you to try doing like what we did in our warm up a few times and that becomes your project. Okay, so like, don't get too hung up on it. Don't get, don't get so hung up on this that you decide that this is not the place that you should be because I'm telling you right now, it is. This is the place. This is the place. You belong here wherever you're at on your journey. I don't care if you've never hold, held a paintbrush before, you're in the right spot. It's always hard to try something new. It really is but we got you and we're here to support you every step of the way. I find that it's harder to retry something that at one point maybe you were told you weren't good at. Ooh, talk more about that, Keenan. Okay. So I think that that is kind of hurtful, right? When you're told, oh, you don't quit your day job. By external or internal sources. Both. Yeah. One is definitely more damaging, but one mm -hmm. initiates the initial doubt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's harder to retry something you know you will enjoy, but you are filled with doubt from either others or something that was, like I said, initiated by others maybe. Mm -hmm. Or even yourself and someone confirmed accidentally as a side comment. Yeah. Those I can mean, be dangerous. I mean, it, it is really hard when like... How do I say this? I think we all want to be valued. And I think we also want to be accepted. And we also want to find joy and do things that we like to do. Yeah, stuff that's fun. Stuff that's really fun. But sometimes what happens is 
that the stuff that we enjoy doing, the stuff that's really fun, um, other people might not be okay with what it is that we do and they will let you know, you know, and that's hard. It's hard to keep going because there's, there's nothing worse than like putting yourself out there. I mean, to be joyful, to find an interest, to find a passion is putting yourself out there. That is opening up your heart for the world to see. That's not an easy thing. And so then when we do that, when we have the courage to actually do that, and then when it's not received well, when we get judgment for it, criticism, criticism for it, or made fun of for it, oh, mm -hmm. it just breaks you. Because then you're just like, well then, hey, I really put myself out here. You know, like, I'm not gonna do that again because that hurt, that really hurt. Um, and I think that's why I focus or try and like talk so much about how if you find joy in the actual process of it, in the painting, in the creating, and you don't tie your worth to the outcome, then no matter what you paint and no matter what people say, they can't stop you. It, but it's when you stop and you let those comments and those judgments and those criticisms from people who, by the way, are most likely not doing that themselves, not putting themselves out there. So like, you don't even get an opinion, my friend. You paint something. Let me yeah. see your painting. No, just don't say that. But You can invite them. <laughs> that actually is a good idea. You could say, hey, why don't you come paint with me? Yeah, do that instead. But that's when you let, that's when you let them win and steal your joy from you. Yeah. Okay, now we're moving on to the green part. I finally got through the yellow. <laughs> now wow. we're on to green. Challenge accomplished. Challenge accomplished. Put in your glare. Another really helpful tool, let's say that you're, um, you're having a hard time with your glare. If you have bleed proof white or white gouache, white acrylic paint, or even a white gel pen, use that white gel pen for that highlight. Use it to your advantage. If you don't have it, you can just paint around it, and that works too. If you do have it and you're like, oh, I accidentally blended out that glare and I don't have a good highlight on that, well, add it back in. You can do that. It's not cheating. It's working with what you've got. It's working with what you've got, and frankly, like, I don't know, sometimes people are like, well, is it true watercolor if you use a pen? I don't know. I, I'm gonna be honest, I don't really care, you know? Yeah, and who's Frank Lee? <laughs> <laughs> Dad joke for the win, Keenan. That was good. Uh. Yeah, and who's Frank Lee? <laughs> Maybe it's Stan Lee's brother. There we go. Bringing it right back. Amen. Okay. Sarah, do you know who Stan Lee is? Yes, I know who Stan Lee is. I had to double check because there's a lot, a lot of doubt. I don't know a lot about the there. universe of comics, but I know who Stan Lee is. Okay, good. <laughs> I should have made a joke there about, I don't know, like an architect or something, like be totally off then. Be like, I know who he is. I saw that building he made, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah, he was in The Lion King. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You guys are doing great. You're doing really great, okay? Just keep on going. And if you're feeling like that tense of being like, oh, I just don't even know if this, you know how like internally sometimes we're like, is this even working out? And this is taking a lot of time and I'm feeling frustrated. Breathe. This is just play. It's just a piece of paper. I've been doing a lot of, this is, this is sort of tied into what we've already been talking about. But I've been doing a lot of home improvement projects lately. Mm -hmm. Painting cabinets and 
hiding a... Yeah, your cabinets look great. Thank you. You're welcome. But I've been also hiding this uh, this chimney that I have in the house mm -hmm. uh, that was hidden and then exposed, and I'm rehiding it. But one thing I've noticed is I get frustrated when I think I don't have the right tools. Mm. And it's interesting when you think about it with painting and or home improvement, which I'm going to stick with, mm -hmm. because I've finished the projects with the tools I have, even though I'm frustrated that I know there are tools that work better. Yes. You know, but yes. I power through because I don't have those tools. and I don't want to go s spend a crazy amount of money on power tools and stuff. Mm -hmm. But for painting, it can be the same thing. Like I love the round 10. It's not perfect for detail work, mm -hmm. but I know I'm not very good at detail work. Yeah. So it's okay. Yeah. I can get better with the round 10 and then I'll move on to detail work. Absolutely. I mean, like I always, I feel like when you watercolor specifically and this, and I'll let you guys in on a little secret, oh, snap. little experience. Maybe this isn't a secret, but I went to art school and let me tell you what <laughs> I know, can you believe? Today? <laughs> <laughs> Those people that I that I taught that taught me that I worked with, we weren't going to the most expensive art stores and getting the very best quality supplies that we can get our hands on, okay? We were literally making what we could with what we could afford and as poor college students, I mean, that was nothing. That was like so what I'm saying is, with watercolor, I think that there is this idea that you can't do watercolor unless you have, like you have to have the right supplies. Do I think that sometimes having the right supplies helps? Absolutely, I mean, it makes your job easier. But like, I'm telling you right now that if I went and started painting with watercolor, I could not afford 100% cotton watercolor when I started painting watercolor. I couldn't afford that. I just, it, it wasn't realistic for me at the time. And so I went with the $5 pad at Walmart and I learned how to use it because supplies are simply tools and they can make your job easier or harder depending on what you're doing and what you're trying to accomplish. So for me, I just wanted to paint with watercolors and try this new medium and play with color. I mean, that's why I fell in love with liquid watercolors because of, because of how vibrant they were. It was this whole world. And I just wanted to play with them. That was it. I wanted to paint carrots and veggies and do little illustrations with how vibrant these paints are. And I could because I just grabbed what I had. I grabbed what I could afford. I learned how to use it. And then when you learn how to use something, you also understand its limits. And when you understand a product's limits, then you like stop getting mad at it for what it's not doing for you and just appreciating what it does. We're like, okay, like the $5 pad I got from Walmart was Canson paper. I really like that paper. I learned that that paper is not the best paper to do like landscapes on. So then when I do landscapes and I want different things to happen, I go with 100% cotton paper. You know what I mean? Like you just, you familiarize yourself with the su supplies that you have, learn how to utilize them to your benefit, and then like stop being mad at it for what it's not doing for you. You know what I mean? Totally. But like, let's say you're painting and you're trying to get something done and it's just not working and you're like, I don't understand why, then it's possible that the supplies that you are, that you have are not in line or are not aligned with the outcome that you're hoping for. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. So that's when maybe take a look at what's going on. That's when that next level comes into, into play. Yeah. But if you're here just to like play, learn about raindrops uh -huh. you can use you can do this same project with any supplies you have any colors this would work with any paper like don't let that stop you don't let that stop you from finding joy in creating 
And the beauty of this one, I think of this one specifically because it's a huge one for this project in my mind is for the form and figuring that out. Mm -hmm. You can do parts of this with just pencil. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? You Absolutely. Can, you can even colored pencils if that's what you've got. Like, oh man, you could do colored pencils initially. Oh. Oh man. Do you guys know, so Taylor works in our customer uh, happiness. Yeah. And she's taught a couple tutorials with me because she's a colored pencil artist. She's phenomenal. I just can't imagine what she can do with raindrops. Are you kidding? Like, I'm just imagining her work with raindrops. And I'm, yes. So, yeah, seriously. There's no limit to tools if you start to get crazy with yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Two C's, crazy creative. <laughs> Okay, so we're almost done. I've just been repeating those same steps. Dark value and then gradient while leaving a highlight. And as you can see, I'm starting to get some dimensionality on my paper, but they're not fully popping yet. And that's because we're gonna go back in and basically do like darken our values one more time like we did in our warm up. So we put the gradients down, we got the color transitions, we have our shadows, but let's deepen them because that's really what's gonna make them fully pop. Now, of course, there are some areas, some little, like the tiny little ones that might not be as detailed. Don't let that stop you. You're doing good. You're doing good work, you guys. And if you need encouragement, just come hang out with us. <laughs> yeah. Trust me. We have a good time. We do. At the very least, you might not love your painting, but you'll probably, you're probably going to laugh, gonna, at least. <laughs> I, we hope. I mean, I think I'm funny. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, you are. Keenan definitely is funny, so well, we're good there. There are days. <laughs> you have your moments. I, thank you. Okay, I realize I forgot one little guy up here, so I'm putting that back in. It's hard to come up with new material when you live in your workspace mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. don't get paid. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so you're telling me that if you made money doing this, you would do more? Yes. <laughs> Is that how that works? I think that's how <laughs> Okay. Good job. Good job. Shake it out. Take a breather. We were tight in there for a little bit. We're just gonna uh, take a little sip. Roll the shoulders. Eat a little cookie, you know. Or a big cookie if you've got them. Check that posture. Stretch that shoulder so you don't get a crink in your neck like I get sometimes. Do the chicken dance. All right. Now this is where we're gonna start introducing Payne's Gray to some of our colors to really deepen those values. But be careful, Payne's Gray is a strong color. You just need a little bit. Because what we don't want is we don't want these colors to gray out, okay? So we're gonna start with our shadows. I'm gonna move back to my six. So basically, like, we're at the point now of if this is your water drop. Whatever this shadow is, you just need to make sure that it's a darker value than whatever is going on on the bottom half of your raindrop. That's what you gotta make sure of. If it's the same value, it's, there's gonna be no separation of space, okay? So as you are going in, and each raindrop is slightly different from each other, go in and be like, okay, what is the bottom value of that raindrop? I just have to be darker underneath that, okay? So my fuchsia, I'm gonna grab some pink, just straight dark pink underneath blend out a little bit okay fuchsia done <laughs> let's grab some orange same thing and then i'm gonna spread it out just a little bit Next one. And let's say that your raindrop got a little bit darker than you wanted. And even by using like 
these shadows and colors, it's still not popping. Well, that's when you can maybe bring in a different color and see if that adjustment of hue will help it, okay? So let's actually try it on one of the raindrops. I'm gonna grab orange and a little bit of Payne's gray. Let's actually grab some more yellow too. Oop, oh, so scary. lift some of this up. Okay, so I grabbed a little bit of Payne's Gray, so now it's kind of like a brown, because I don't know if you guys know, know this, but brown is essentially dark orange. In our mind, we separate them as two different things, but they're the same. Yeah, that makes sense, because the chocolate oranges, those are delicious. Yeah. Ooh, see? See how putting in that brown made that pop? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like, if you're, if you're struggling on getting that pop that you're looking for, let's see about adding some, some Payne's Gray in that color mixture just a little bit. See where that takes you, okay? I'm just softening this shadow edge. It just felt too hard for me. I'm lifting up some of that color. There we go. Okay. Now yellow. Yellow. I'm going to actually grab some of this brown mixture to my yellow. Let's see what that does. Oh, yeah. Pull it out a little bit. There we go. And on these really tiny ones, sometimes you really only have space for just putting in a line. And that's okay. No judgment here. Yeah. Man, if anything, I feel like the trickiest part is making sure I get all the drops. So you don't miss any? Yeah. I'm like, oh wait, I didn't do that one. Look how cool they already look though. Yeah, they're really starting to kind of pop out a little bit more. And again, like how much you want them to pop, pop that's the darkest, then you'd want your value to be darker. Does that make sense? So like, look, I just put in mostly Payne's Gray with that and see how that popped a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Just, I, I just want you to be careful with it. It's really easy to get carried away. But let's just see. Oh, okay. But you see how it kind of like grays out that color a bit? It's not bad. Those look crazy. I just looked at the big screen for the first time in a few <laughs> minutes. Holy shnikes. <laughs> They're looking pretty good. We're doing good. Are those real? <laughs> They're about to look really real. I know we've been here for a while, but this, this is the part that really makes it pop out. And if you're feeling edgy, what happens if we like really, you know? I'm not familiar with that code. <laughs> you don't get it. It's fine. You they get, get it. it. <laughs> they get it. This is what I meant by new material. <laughs> <laughs>
I can't stay up with the trends, Sarah. No, you can't. If I'm never let out of the studio. It's fine. I'll, I got, it's fine, Keenan. We got you. <laughs> I'm, I can feel myself getting a little bit braver and really just going for <laughs> some of these. And that's a fun place to create. Sometimes you go a little bit crazy, but you know what? There's really something fun about throwing caution to the wind and just being like, I don't care. I'm doing this. We're just gonna see. The wind is rarely stronger than you. Mm, is that true? No. Okay. <laughs> I, just, I just thought I'd try to see if it worked. It didn't, Keenan. Okay. Go get new material. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's like, that's like when uh, Dobby was given a book with a pair of, with a sock in it. Oh, Harry Potter reference. Look so, at you. Yeah, yeah. Has someone been reading? It's basically my, my release from the dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I got the yellow. Now I'm moving on to green. I mixed a stronger green. I'm going to grab a little bit of Payne's Gray in there. Really darken that up. All right, let's go. Boop. Sometimes I like to do it in chunks, so I'll put the line down, rinse. I just did the line on three, rinse my brush, and then I'm gonna blend out all three. If you can work quickly, it saves some time. Look at these, look at these babies popping out. And then when we go back and do that one final dark swipe on our raindrop, forget about it. All right, now to the blue. Grab some blue. Grab some Payne's Gray, so it's a darker value. Swipe, 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 rinse, pat. Blend out. Now this is a little guy, so I'm just gonna swipe, swipe. So I'm just putting a little bit there. I'm not going too crazy with details, because again, they're itty bitty. The big ones are doing the work for, for us, so we're good. Sweet, all right, let's go to the purple. Grab some fuchsia, little bit of blue, little bit of Payne's gray. Swipe, swipe, swipe. Rinse, tap, blend. Okay. This one's not popping. I forgot to do a shadow on that. Okay, one more, one more little thing. So basically now what we're going to do is we're gonna go back and darken the darkest value on our raindrops if they need it. So it's just, again, we're just strengthening those value changes so then it really makes it three-dimensional. Let's go. And you don't have to paint the whole water drop. You can, if it feels like too much of a hard edge, you can rinse, pat, blend out. 
but you make the decision. It might be good enough just like looking at where it is and just being like, actually, that doesn't feel too disjointed. I'm just gonna leave that dark value. It's up to you. This is where you decide because I can't see your painting. These look wild. Yeah? Yeah. And they look totally different on a smaller screen. Oh yeah, this is definitely one of those projects that you're gonna wanna step back from and take a picture of. Yes. And then you're gonna be like, dang, I did that. <laughs> I will say on my yellows, I definitely relied on other hues, other colors, hue is color. I definitely relied on other colors to really um, strength, strengthen that value. You know, like at this point, most of these are kind of more orange, mm -hmm. but I'm okay with that. I'm not mad about it. Nope. All right, let's go to the green. And we have kind of a section here that's like a lime green a little bit. I was going to say avocado green, Ooh, yeah. but that's because I'm hungry <laughs> and I'd rather eat an avocado. Well, you're working right now for free, so you can't eat. I haven't eaten in weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're not sure like how, what? Uh, that just woke that raindrop up. Yeah. And if you're not sure like how dark do I need to go on my raindrop? Think about the value that you put on your shadow. That should speak to the darkest value that's on your raindrop. So if you're like, I don't know how dark I should go, um, you can go as dark as the shadow. Okay? Look at these. Yeah, see, isn't this last step just really making them pop? Yes. It's so fun. And kind of giving them a little more movement, too. Yeah? Yeah, like a couple of them kind of look like they're still sliding down the window. Yeah. I can see that, like by the shadows and stuff, too. Uh -huh. Like maybe that shadow got a little too crazy. I'm going to lighten that up. There we Easy go. Easy fixed. Easy fix, no problem. Not a problem here. And then like for me, I'm looking at this raindrop and I'm like, okay, that's actually a really hard edge right here. So I'm just gonna take my brush, clean brush, have it be wet, but not dripping wet and lift at the bottom where they meet so it can transition smoother. There we go, that feels better. All right, now we're on like to the dark, dark green, like the full green part. Keep going. Keenan, do you have a favorite raindrop so far? The one you're working on right there. Oh. That circle one. Pressure. Now I'm yeah. afraid I'm going to mess it up. Well, I'm actually thinking now that I've mentioned it, you're going to mess it up somehow. <laughs> Just to spite me. <laughs> yeah, you like something, I'm going to paint yeah. all over it. <laughs> I was actually going to erase this one to show you how easy it is. <laughs> that would be in line with what I do sometimes, yes. right? I actually really like that one on the far right, right in the middle on the edge. That one's really cool too. Which one? The green one. Far right, middle edge. Far right. Far right. Middle 
edge. This one? Yes. Okay. <laughs> don't, don't. There's a lot of raindrops going on here, Keenan, <laughs> okay? I didn't know how else to describe it. I, I like, got I'm, lost. I'm just thinking, farthest east. Nope, to, nope, that would have been worse. Oh. <laughs> nope. Don't talk to me. <laughs> don't talk to me in the... <laughs> I used to work at a lighting store in Utah. Yeah. And um, we would have customers call and they'd be like, okay, I'm trying to find you. Are you on the east or the west side? And I oh, would. Oh dear. <gasps> I don't know. And then, like, that's an embarrassing thing to ask. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I'm like, I don't. Which side are you on? So the first couple I just guessed, I just like made it up. Because I'm like, well, they would see it. We have a sign. Yeah. Um, and then I just listened to other people. Uh huh. When they answered the phone and got asked that question. Then you figured it out. Then I figured okay. it out. Okay. But I am a much better, I would say more secure person than I was back then. So now I would just ask. Like, nope, I don't know what direction that is. I would just say, I don't, you know what? <laughs> I don't know. Let me ask. Head north on I-35. Is that left or right? And nobody's gonna get mad at you. Nope. But I really was afraid people would think I was stupid. Now that's long gone. Yeah. <laughs> Who cares if they think you're stupid? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot to do the shadow on this one. And you're gonna run into ones where you forgot some shadow. That's okay, just put it in then. These are looking just crazy. They're, they're, I'm, I'm pretty excited with how this turned out. I'm doing purple now, need more pink. Now I will say that there is one that's kind of sticking out to me too much. So I'm gonna go back to it in a little bit. Don't tell us which one I'm gonna try and guess. No, because then if it's not the same one, then I'm gonna feel bad. It's okay, I can take it. What is it, Keenan? Just a minute, let me change camera angles for me. Okay, I'm going to look at it as though I'm not, you know, I'm not focusing my eyes. Okay. I'm going to look at the, each corner and see if anyone pops on the corners. <sighs> Ooh, this is tough because none of them are really, none of them are really popping up specifically but there is mm -hmm. one that is slightly darker which one the green one this one yes yes that's what i was talking about yes good job thank you oh and i'm so relieved nice because then i'm like oh is there one that i'm not seeing nope those are the, that's the only one that i keep looking at actually okay and there's a little couple little guys in here that i gotta just Send a little love to. They don't have to be perfectly detailed, but just a little bit of love. Okay, yes, so this one right here is a little bit too dark. I think it, it feels too disjointed, too dark. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my round two, I'm gonna use just clean water, and I'm going to drop in water on that drop. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my towel. Make sure you use a clean spot because if there, there's paint on your towel when you try to blot, it will actually leave color, so lift. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Done. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> Boom. Boom. And then there are some where I just kinda wanna blend out a little bit more. Mm. I mean, you really can go in and out on these for a while. So at some point, remind yourself to walk away, give yourself an opportunity to look at it with fresh eyes so you don't paint yourself into oblivion here. There are water drops. Dang, I'm pretty darn proud of myself. That looks amazing. And I also just wanna say like, when I first painted this one, I was so proud of myself for how it came out, I really was. And then just painting more over time and I went back to this and I thought, I'm gonna try this again and I think I can do this better. And really when it comes to anything, don't be comparing yourself to the person next to you. Just look at where you're at 
on your journey. I feel good that I've gone from this to this. That feels really nice. So like, don't get caught up in what somebody else is doing. Don't get caught up on what their raindrops look like. You know what I mean? Like, just look at what you're doing. And if you try this project and it's just like, doesn't work out, put it away, keep painting, come back to it in a few months, see where you are then. It's so fun to see where you start and where you've come because over time, over the length of the time, if you are consistent in your play, in your exploring, in your curiosity, in your practice, you will see improvement. That's how it works. That's just how it goes. There will be times where you don't feel that way, but just keep going. It's the same thing. The, the what is it? The days are long, but the years are short. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, I like that. It's that similar thing. It's going to feel like you're stuck in this place, but when you zoom out, you will see an increase in skill and talent. That's just how it goes if you're consistent, you know? Totally. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for painting <laughs> with me. This was so fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope this was valuable to you. I can't wait to see what you come up with. If you are in the watercolor Facebook group, Thank you. If you're not, you can join it. That's called Let's Make Art Watercolor. And if you're on Instagram, you can tag us in your work. Uh, hashtag, no, at Let's Go Make Art or hashtag Let's Make Art. And if you need any of these supplies, you can find them at letsmakeart.com. Thank you, Keenan. Thank you. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.